All right, guys, so I'm going to show you here how to use the spline IK, or create it, I should say, and then use it. So what we're going to do, I have an older version of this on VMO. Um, I don't really use VMO anymore. I know there's some people follow me, uh, like Rigging, Rigging Dojo, and I apologize for everybody else who is following me. Um, I am not using it as much anymore. Um, just YouTube is a lot more accessible. I get a little Taco Bell money from it. So please do follow it on YouTube when you can. So here's the updated one. Um, so let me show you why you should use, as well as how to make it, the Spline IK. The Spline IK is good for creatures. Why? Because you get good organic movement from it. Originally made for tails, originally made for snakes and serpent-like strange things. And we can use it now, which is kind of nice, and we can attach it to our quadruped creatures. Now I'm just going to make a single quadruped back, but I'm not going to put any limbs on it. So in essence, we're making a snake. So the way I built this, and I use my joint tool here, and I'll open a joint tool for a second. The way I built this was I built my root, and I built away from that root. And from there, I built a tail on the end that I can actually create a tail if I want to or something else. I just made a single bone, so it's a tiny little tail. But real quick on the joints, I want to mention this. Uh, there's a variable joint radius setting. This prevents Maya from doing elephantitis. Someone on YouTube had reminded me about this. I totally forgot that also this can be used to stop that from happening. Um, and a lot of times I'll leave this on because if I want to change my settings to 3D Studio Max, and because 3D Studio Max treats your bones like kind of like Geo and can rescale and shift if you export a rig out. So keeping it on, a lot of times I will. But um, if you don't, if you're not going to go out to 3D Studio Max, and I do have another video when I talk about these settings, if you're not going to go to 3D Studio Max, you can actually turn this um, off and you don't have to worry about it scaling up and down. I just want to mention that real quick. All right. Let's make our own curve. So we don't want Maya to make our own curve for us. We want to make our curve. And the reason why is because you're in control where your points of movement are going to be. If Maya does it, he's just going to, it's going to be like a drunk, retarded man pointing and playing pin the tail on the donkey. It just puts all this crap everywhere. And you don't want that. You want to be in control all the time. So I'm going to keep my finger on the V key and I'm going to click on the bone above the root. And, um, oops, my bad, control C. Make sure I get my, I click on my EP curve tool. Now, real quick before I start keeping my finger in the V key and start clicking, because what we're doing is we're snapping our points in here. Let me uh, point real quick what we're using. We're using three cubic. Each one of these kind of are broken down in segments of how your points are being treated on the line. I'm not going to get into buttonology. And it is a term used by Autodesk. And it, they warn all of us, training us, that you're not to use it because people get confused. So what we're going to focus on is three cubic. Um, and you saw in earlier uh, videos with rigging, I talked about linear, which is just sharper angles. But with three cubic is mainly what we're going to do. And it's going to give us a nice flow and organic curve. And that's what we want. So let's close that out. Keep my finger on the V key. And I'm going to snap on the bone above the root. The next one, the next bone. There we go. Keep my finger on the V key the whole time. I'm finally going to hit enter. Now, hopefully, we don't get any weirdness. I've been getting a weird warning error and Maya not wanting to make my spline curve. There are some selection um, issues in 2012, 2011, 2012, and 2013. Maya doesn't quite refresh or doesn't select. You have to change your view and go back to it. Um, mine was just giving me a weird warning. It would not build my spline curve. So hopefully that isn't an issue anymore. So let's go to our IK spline handle tool. Let's look at our settings real quick. Now the reset, the default, it does an auto, create, auto parent curve you can leave that on if you want to. In our case, I'll, I'll leave this off. They also have auto create curve. Now we want that definitely off because when you turn that off, that doesn't um, that prevents Maya from making the curve for you. You don't because we already made ours. We want to use that one, so we can turn that off. An auto parent curve. I'll turn that off temporarily. Maybe I'll turn it on in another setting, but I'll turn it off in this case. What that does is it allows Maya to parent the um, spline. A line underneath the IK um, hierarchy. But that doesn't always work like you want, depending on how you put your controllers. So you can follow along a little bit easier if I turn that off. We'll simulate a troubleshooting um, situation. All right. Turn that X off for a second. Now that we got that, the spline curve is ready to go. I'm going to click. Now Maya's going to ask you, hey, where are you going to start this spline IK? I'll say, okay, Maya. It's your turn to click. So we're going to click here and show Maya where we want to start it. It's right there. 
And then mine is going to ask you on the bottom here, underneath our command line, where is it going to end? So we're going to end our spline IK right here. And then one more question Maya is going to ask you is what curve are you using since you turned the auto curve maker off? We're going to say we're going to use this curve right here. There we go. So it made just fine. So I don't know why I had some weird errors before. But sometimes my will be weird. And you'll see if I turn my IK back on, you'll see you have an IK control. Now what happens here, what goes on in the background, is Maya used our spline curve as a control area for our movement for our bones, believe it or not. And I'll show you how. So let's hide our joints for a second. And let's hide our IK for a second. I mean right click on my spline curve, you see control vertex. You'll see we have two points in the tip of the bone and two points at the end. Now, don't let these confuse you because we don't need to make controllers and clusters for these areas. That's the only way you really can move CV points on a NURBS type of object. So, we're going to make controllers for each one of these little points. Each one of them is going to have a point. But the ones on the end need to be paired up. Because if we look at it, let me just grab these two. If we look at it and we turn our joints back on, you'll see what I'm talking about. See that? Two points on the end here and two points on the end there. So we're going to make a, a cluster that controls these guys by themselves. And it only happens on the ends of these guys. Everybody else is going to have their own control system and cluster system. All right. just want to point that out real quick. So we got our spline bone. We got our bones made. We got our spline curve made. If we turn on our IK, you'll see we have our spline IK ready to go. So what we're going to do now, let's hide our joints and hide our IK handle. We're going to grab our CV curve and we're going to right click on them and do control vertices. Now again, remember when I said that the only way to control these is you need to make a cluster and then we need to make a controller. Because you never want your animator to go in here and try to select these points because he will stab you. He will find you at the company party. I know I use that joke all the time, but he will get mad at you and it's not a good idea to do that. So you want to be able to make it so he gets controllers. So to be able to do that, we're going to grab these points, these two, starting out, because they're in the front and you can see that they were localized to one bone. I'm going to go to create deformers. We're going to go cluster. I'll create a cluster right there. Go back to here, right click, control vertex. We're going to grab one this time and hit the G key and create another cluster because G repeats the last process. Right click, control vertices, grab it here, G key. Same thing again, all single until you get to the end. G key, G key, and finally the last two, just like in the front, the G key. So that's why I talked about that ahead of time so you wouldn't get confused. And know that the ends of these, these clusters control two CV points on the, big, on the back and on the front. All right, <coughs> so now that we got that, we're not going to make controllers for these guys. So let's go and make a controller. That's controller noise, if you're wondering. And I'm going to hit the W key and hit insert. And I'm going to keep my finger on the V key and snap him to the cluster. It's nice that we can do that. Control D, duplicate. Keep my finger on the V key and snap him to the cluster. I'm going to cheat a little bit. Control D, finger on the V key, snap it. Look at that. So awesome. Control D, keep my finger on the V key, snap it over. Yes, I do electrical like this in real life. Control D, and keep your finger on the V key. How's the family? Pretty good. I know it's kind of not exciting right now. And do Control D one more time. Keep my finger on the V key and snap it right there. There we go. So we got controls all the way across. So what we need to do, let's freeze or transform. So let's go to modify, freeze transforms. Let's rename them using the rename tool in Maya. Rename, we're gonna say spine, enter, and we get like five, which is great. Cool, he's a very long creature, made up one. All right, so we got this all done. So what we need to do now is parent constraint these clusters to each one of these controllers, because again, we're letting our animator have controllers to use. So we're gonna grab the first, our first, we're gonna grab the controller. I gotta make sure I don't get that backwards. So um, we parent constraint is opposite. You don't grab the child and the parent. It's opposite of that. You want to grab the parent, then the child. It's just how it works. It simulates a parent constraint relationship. So it does kind of make sense, believe it or not. So grab the controller, shift select the cluster, go to our constraints, open a parent constraint. I'm going to review this real quick. Turn on maintain offset so that Maya calculates both objects in 3D space and hit add. 
We do the same thing here, but this time we're just gonna hit the G key to repeat the last process. Save us a whole lot of headache. Look at that, so easy. I'm just hitting the G key, pretty awesome. You can show this to your friends the next bar mitzvah you go to. Yes, it will be exciting, everyone will love it. Cool, sorry, just making sure I selected the right thing. G key. My joke was so bad it threw me off. G key there. <laughs> all right, so we got these all in here. So now what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna make another secondary controller to control these in groups, which is kind of nice. So I'm going here, right click on this guy, control points, the W key, move these up in space, grab this, shrink it down just a bit. And nice thing about this with is all the points, I can just hit W, move them over, save some time. Maybe scale a couple, scale it back a little bit there. There we go. Object mode, there we go, back to where it belongs. Um, modify center pivot because I moved the CVs it does get a little bit weird so center pivot and control D and uh, before I get too excited let's make that pivot a little bit more reasonable so what we can do so we don't get some weird arching going on I'm gonna hit insert and I'm gonna move that pivot point right in the middle of these bones if you want to pick a bone you can sometimes that's a little easier but I'm gonna move it right in the middle of this bones and these particular case. So I can do that here and you can customize it for each shape. I just have a little bit of an arch in here. I'll just do control D and be super lazy and move this one over here. So with that we grab these, freeze them, we name them. Spine Superior. All right, whatever, smart. I like to put a space in there. Big deal. There we go. Spine superior. So we've got all these spine superiors in here. So we're now going to parent them. We can actually physically hard parent them now. Underneath our controller. Hard parent. And the reason why parent constraints a good idea is if you run into any problems, you can undo stuff without messing up the hierarchy. But in this case, I'm just going to keep it this way. So now let's turn our bones back on so you can actually see this in motion. Turn on, I can't handle so you can just see that. So check it out. So now watch this. We can move this. Do, 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 do. Organic snake man. Animator can move these around, get a little flex and movement. And you can also move the larger set. Do, 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 do. Pretty cool, huh? Pretty nice. So it allows you to get a larger set. You can keyframe these individually. And the nice thing, he can zero these out when he feels that he totally messed up and was animating drunk. You should never do that. It's not right, kids. Animating. Don't let friends drive animation. I got nothing. All right, cool. So that's about it. And I hope that helps you guys out. Now, uh-oh, one more thing I want to cover. Moving this whole system. Now, we're going to pretend we got our limbs, we got everything else we need, our animators um, finished. On with his last assignment and he's ready for this rig. Let's say we're going to need to get this out the door. I am going to have to make a whole control system for it. I just want to troubleshoot and show you this real quick. Let me do modify and freeze transforms. I'll just call this main. A lot of times you want to keep the history clean so we've got edit delete by type history. Never do that on your geo. Um, it'll strip your rig. You just want to do non-deformer when you are painting weights. But in this case, it's just the controller. Complete history, there we go. All right, so now I want to move this whole guy, this whole system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my root, shift select my uh, superior spines, and then shift select my controller. And I'm going to hit P. Now you'll think sometimes that you're done, but you'll sometimes get a double transform. And that's if you let it auto parent. Now you'll notice we left auto parent off and we're in control of the whole system. And notice we have no double transform. It's pretty nice. So I probably should have left auto parent on so you could see the situations where it goes wrong. But I can talk about that right now. So if you do get a double transform and the curve goes one way and the IK goes another, or the geo, like the bones go one way and the curve goes another, 
Easy way to fix that is you'll go in here, grab your curve. Let's see if I can grab him and get real close here. Grab that curve and parent him underneath this guy, this controller. If you're still having trouble, grab your IK and then parent him underneath your main controller. And you should be okay from there. All right? So that's about it. Show that to you. Pretty cool. And the nice thing about this, too, look, it's completely scalable. What? No double transform, no nothing. Pretty sweet. Well, I am really done this time. You guys have a good one, and don't shoot your eye out.